was inspired by Helen Spaxman's untitled ceramic tile. Please welcome to the stage now Mary Duffy reading The Lighthouse Keeper's Daughter. Yeah, I'm not The Lighthouse Keeper's Daughter, but I did know The Lighthouse Keeper's Daughter. I grew up with her in uh, Newfoundland, where on a, I grew up on a tiny island called Red Island in Newfoundland. And so the sea is very familiar to me. And something I've asked people over and over and over again is, what is the color of the sea? It's like, who put the caramel in the caramel bar? And nobody's <laughs> ever been able to really answer it. Uh, you can, this does not do Helen justice, because uh, it's an underwater globe. And the colors of the sea, and there she's got burgundy, gray, greens, azures. And what is it? I guess it's for each of us, the color of the sea is different. Now, a little side story here. I talk to Helen every day. I work at the library, and she and her daughter come in there, and I fell in love with her little daughter, Claire. She's the most serious little girl, but when she smiles, it's like the whole universe lights up. And so they're two of my favorite people that come into the Britannia Library. But I didn't meet, meet her until tonight, when Sita connected us together. So I wrote this without actually meeting you, Helen, and it's inspired by the colors that you painted in your water. And as I said, it's been the eternal question for me, having grown up surrounded by water. Homer said it was wine drunk the ocean. Um, James Joyce and Ulysses said, isn't the sea what algae calls it, a great sweet mother? So what is the sea? So this is called the Lighthouse Keeper's Daughter. And thank you, Helen, for teaching me the colors of the sea. Her father raised the sea, attuned to its push and pull, cared for its tears and tantrums, sent messages in Morse code, guided sailors' journeys home. She climbed the stairs to the tower, tried to contain the manic sea in the fragile glass of a fishbowl, careful not to falter, trying to tame the tides. Was the fog to blame? That day she dropped the globe, allowing glass to shatter, oceans to burst free, spilling fish, stone, and algae, washing the world in tints of wine, grainy, Sure. Here, you can stay up here actually because you're going to be at the sea now. Um, so, uh, so our next two poets created together from Helen Spaxman's second untitled ceramic tile. Please. Welcome again, Mary Duffy and Sita Carboni to the stage for the Sediments of Law. We're going to read this piece together so it's been collaborated. It's really a huge joint effort and it was uh, wonderful to work together and to work with Helen. I was also taking a pottery class with Helen at the time and uh, anyways, we've got lots of inspiration. This is Sediments of Loss for Jay. Your heart stopped, now lies entombed, buried in the sea under silt. Only waves caress it, wear away hard edges. So much left unsaid, black hair like seaweed, sacrifice for love. What remains for the living, silhouettes of your absence raw with grief? You dance with azure angels where the ocean ends and sky begins. Release lessons into scarlet clouds. Leave messages in sand dollars. What is left over rises. Sediments of loss. Your young smile as light as a bird's wing. up, created from my collage, Summer Warm and Gro Glowing Love. Please welcome again, Sita Carboni reading her poem, Slipping into Yellow. This piece actually, I wrote to it during Wordworth's writing series, and uh, I just thought it was so pure and joyous. Um, slipping into Yellow. 
Slipping into yellow, I wrap myself in sundresses and sandals, take naps on beaches, forget to check my phone messages. I remember growth and laughter, how it feels to be alive. I smile more at my neighbors. Slipping into yellow, I dip my feet into blue with salt spray and seaweed, let my heart warm and my worries evaporate into weightless clouds too high to cause burden. Slipping into yellow, I dream of islands and gulls and tan skin touching after sunset. Slipping into yellow. Woo!